It's honestly quite difficult to be in my shoes, a reviewer that prides himself on recommending content and missing evaluating a show properly. And incidentally, you're also a jackass. <laughs> you won't often find your favorite content creator who is willing to admit they were wrong. In that aspect, it's something I am semi-proud of, I guess. Jackass alert! The first time I watched the pilot for Star Trek Lower Decks, I was quite off-put. Sure, the animation was quite beautiful and the names involved are all impressive, yet the show failed to click with me on multiple levels. While the self-contained, episodic nature of Trek had returned, the intense, coked-out feeling that had come from watching the episode wasn't something I enjoyed. We're just gonna take off. <laughs> Nobody move! Selling Starfleet technology without the express consent of the Federation Council is the breach of Regulations 498 and 756. And Regulations 25. Oh, hey, that's Rutherford. Rutherford, what's up? Yo, 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 slow down. Is your thingy acting up? Rutherford's an engineer. Oh, and as of a couple weeks ago, cybernetically enhanced. Ooh, I've never met a recent cyborg. Hey, nice to meet you. Welcome to the crew. Jokes flew at me so quickly, I couldn't take time to divulge meaning laugh or wonder what the hell was going on from the spider cow thing i i could tell you all about it but can you synthesize a cure doctor hmm i better you don't have much time oh should wash those hands captain stow it mariner the pilot was a miss for me and followed suit with the disappointment i shared with picard and that empty feeling i felt with discovery finally after paramount sent out the entire season review i decided to go back one more time to my pleasant surprise I was wrong. WRONG! I was wrong about Lower Decks, and today's review is going to try and convince you to give this show a try too. Star Trek Lower Decks is an American adult animated series created by Mike McMahon that streams exclusively on CBS All Access, or Paramount Plus now. The series follows the low-ranked crew members aboard the starship USS Cerritos in the year 2380, and is unlike previous Trek shows as the senior staff appears as supporting characters and not the primary ones. McMahon, creator of the show, had worked on various animated projects including his first few jobs on the shows Drawn Together and South Park. McMahon served as a writer on the hit show Rick and Morty, and in 2018, McMahon went on to create the Hulu series Solar Opposites. The show, now on its third season, has received wide acclaim with a 92% Rotten Tomatoes score. We'll have to build new best friends. I'm Fun Bucket. Fun Bucket, I'm Corvo, and this is Terry, and we are your new best friends. You guys aren't going to try to f*** me, are you? No, 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 no. McMahon pitched this idea for a Trek series to Alex Kurtzman, who had recently signed an extensive contract with CBS Studios to develop further Trek series. Kurtzman was massively impressed with the pitch for McMahon, which was to follow a group of people who put the yellow cartridge in the food replicator so a banana can come out at the other end. The series would take massive inspiration from one of my favorite episodes of The Next Generation, Season 7, Episode 15, Lower Decks. I had previously talked about the episode as its extensive look at junior officers aboard this massive starship was innovative and well-written. The thought of exploring this idea further with a new crew aboard a different ship was quite exciting. Lower Decks is led by a large ensemble crew, much like other shows in the franchise. Beckett Mariner, played by Tawny Newsom, is a rule breaker who's a bit of the ship's gym from the office, yet is really good at her job when the moment comes. Throughout the show, her free-flowing lifestyle butts heads with her mother, Captain Freeman of the ship. The dynamic is interesting and yields some quality writing throughout the show. Sorry about earlier today. I was way out of line. Thanks for looking out. Later, skater! Jack Quaid plays Brad Boimler. Boimler is the typical rule stickler, following everything to the T, but despite this, struggles to improvise in moments like Mariner. His style often clashes with Mariner, who despite being wildly different, creates a quality friendship. I was wrong. I'm glad we followed our guts today. You are my mentor. <laughs> Whatever, nerd. Come on, we can hang without me being your mentor. Noel Wells plays Devana Tendi, an Orion ensign assigned to the medical bay on the Cerritos. Tendi is a bit of the audience through the show as her excitement for all things exploration and Starfleet is one of her admirable charms. Still uh, happy to be here? Are you kidding? I got to hold a heart! She's constantly amazed and excited to be part of the crew, something we all wish we could share. 
Finally, Eugene Cordero plays Sam Rutherford. Rutherford is a part cyborg who McMahon says shares a lot of similarities to TNG character Jordy LaForge. Like Tendi, the two bond over the excitement that Starfleet and exploration has to offer. Crawling through cramped ducks, prying open panels, and adjusting red-hot power cables. Look, 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 I've got blisters on my blisters. As usual with the cast this large, each character is diverse enough that anyone watching will find someone they enjoy. For me, while I do enjoy most of the main cast, I think the most enjoyable character to watch is Commander Jack Ransom, played by Jerry O'Connell. All the ship's children have been ejected into space! All those kids! Freeze program! In thousands of simulations, that's literally never happened before. McMahon said that Ransom was based off that of Will Riker, just on speed and less shame. Be as hard on her as you always are. Yeah, be hard on me. I'm only hard on you when you make me hard. I mean, I'm, I'm not hard right now. I mean, I could I could get hard if I wanted to, but I'm not hard right now. It feels like a character we all know in a day-to-day -day life, and watching him overly feel himself in every situation just to make himself look like an ass is often quite amusing. You're right. Ha! What the... I'd rather die than let you put your life on the line. In my honest opinion, the first episode of Lower Decks, titled Second Contact, doesn't make a strong impression. The show has to balance introducing a large cast, an episode problem, and establishing the universe in a small window that none of the other Trek shows had. In fact, majority, if not all the pilots of the franchise, have been two-parters, and this gives plenty of time to learn about character motives, establish tone, and justify the show ahead. Lower Decks lacks that, and as previously mentioned, the characters rattle off dialogue like each just got done snorting rounds of coke off each other. Jokes don't simmer, but rattle off so darn quick that you don't get a moment to enjoy them. I'm sick of you pushing me around! Explain yourself right here! Boins, you need to shut up. Listen to me. You know nothing. Shut your mouth. Admiral stuff. Love you. Don't you hang up on me! She's your daughter, too! Hang it up now. Don't you dare! Don't, on don't, the button. Don't, don't, up, don't up, you! Up, I saw. Yeah, I thought you were like a boring worker drone. And you are. But inside that drone is an ambitious little weasel. The episode ends with something that has grown quite frustrating me in show writing, and that's naming things audience knows as a quirky joke. It happens quite a bit throughout the show, and even as my praise for the show grew, it's something I'll never be a fan of. Oh hey, you know this character or this thing? I said it! That's funny, right? It's hilarious! Laugh! Making oaths about everything. Everyone knows Did that. Did you know about Spock? Dude came back from being dead. Yeah, I think I've heard of Spock. He's a freaking Genesis device to fuck Khan and some space Can we whales. Just go back to not being friends. How about Sulu? Ooh, he rocked a sword. That was his thing. Oh, Comedy is entirely subjective. So if you find this funny, don't let me change that for you. Vista, please. Mm, do you know Kirk? Yes. My man Warp? Yes. Gary Mitchell? I'm sure I could look him up. You don't have to. Thankfully, Lower Decks picks up quite a bit to explore the characters and the universe. I was off put with the first episode as it lacked that feel I wanted, but quickly found myself molding to what Mike McMahon and his team had created. The show reminded me heavily of the semi spoof of Star Trek Futurama. The beautiful animation, the large ensemble cast, the goofy humor, and the way the writing can always turn a situation into a learned moment, even when you aren't expecting it. Believe it or not, Lower Decks has loads of heart that hit me in ways I didn't expect. Was I convincing enough for you? Human! <laughs> you were perfect, Quimp. Thanks for helping out. Of course. I owed you one. How's the wife? Yeah, I mean, she's hard on me, right? She's the captain. And I'm a pain in the ass. But if she kicked me off the Cerritos, <laughs> I'd be done in Starfleet. She's watching out for me the only way she knows how. And I'm Oftentimes, episodes would end, and I was completely surprised by the end result. An episode like the ninth of the season, Crisis Point, creates a situation where Mariner hijacks Boimler's holographic session to create a simulation where she kills the crew. In it, she eventually battles a version of herself. Without ruining it, the episode serves as a deep dive into the character of Mariner, her feelings towards her captain mother, and her position throughout Starfleet. It's an episode like this, while tonally much different than other episodes of Trek, harnesses that heart and character wonderment that feel entirely fitting to the franchise. <laughs> I don't hate the crew. I work with my best friends. The captain is my mom. I would do anything for her. Oh, come on. No, you hate the captain. You complain about her nonstop. It's like your whole thing. 
Of course, I'd be doing the show a great disservice to not drool over the animation in the series. First off, the title sequence is seriously beautiful. Throughout it, you get tiny hints of the Next Generation's theme as Romulans duke it out with the Borg. <laughs> Colors beam off the television. You can't help but be awe-inspired or simply impressed. The animation reaches a high in the finale, no small parts. The episode features the Cerritos facing off against the Pack Lead, antagonists who reappeared from a past episode of The Next Generation titled Samaritan Snare. I think we are not smart. I think you need to continue to develop. We are smart. The episode features quite a lot of action-packed set pieces that are simply brilliant all of which comes to an epic conclusion with the Cerritos being saved by Captain William Riker of the USS Titan. Finally, all that high school reading of Titan novels had paid off. This moment, led by that wonderful TNG music, is simply great. Red alert! A Packlid party and I wasn't invited? <gasps> About time you showed up, Will. Mariner, this makes us even. You know Riker? Yeah. Jonathan Frakes and Marina Sirtis return as their iconic roles to save the crew in one hell of an epic moment. Easily the best in the entire season. That's better. Lower Decks' first season success was granted with a second to be released on August 12, 2021. The show was also picked up for a third season before the second had even been released, so this is a good sign for the series going forward. Star Trek Lower Decks is still a show that I have to admit comes with some baggage that some fellow Trek fans won't entirely like. I've been badged as a bit of a new Trek hater, despite my immense excitement for every show to be released. Star Trek Picard was just a complete miss in my opinion. Discovery is fine, but I don't think it holds a candle to previous incarnations. That thought had led me to some empty feelings in regards to Lower Decks. Feelings that were a bit unjust. Do I think this show will win over everyone like it did me? Absolutely not. Each episode still feels like a bit of a hallucination as constant name drops, situations, and whatnot are spewed out at such a rapid pace that it's so hard to gauge what in the hell is going on. Going into it, expecting something similar to what we had seen before or in even recent Trek properties will lead you sadly confused. Thankfully, just dialing your brain to expect something like a Futurama, which is maybe something I should have done to begin with, starts to open your heart and mind to what can really be possible with the show. It is entirely a love letter to each series, done with enough heart to justify its existence and enough pizzazz that makes each episode an eye-gasmic experience. Honestly, it deserves a full season watch, and I highly recommend it.